Hello everyone, I am Dr. P. Shanti, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Mathematics, the Standard Fireworks Rajaratnam College for Women, Sivagasi. In this video, we are going to learn about rank and nullity of a linear transformation. This is one of the major concept in linear transformation. This is useful in many concept in mathematics to solve the problems. The learning objective of this e content is to know what is rank and nullity of a linear transformation T from the vector space V into another vector space V. And also we are going to see some of the examples related to the transformations and then we are going to see about some of its properties, results, theorems and finally we are going to see its applications. Let us enter into the content. Let us see if, uh, what is rank, its definition is we define a transformation T from the vector space V to W. The rank of the linear transformation is defined as the dimension of its image T of V. That is we have to find the image set of for every element of V belongs to V that collection first we have to estimate then the dimension of that collection is indicated as rank T. It is denoted as RANK rank T and then the nullity of the transformation is nothing but the dimension of the kernel of T. So, we know that what is the definition of kernel T? Kernel T is nothing but the set of all elements of V in which is the T of V equal to 0. That is we have to collect the elements in the domain V for which all its images must be equal to 0. Yes. So, if we find the element the kernel set then its dimension gives the value of nullity of T. This null space the kernel T is also called as null space of T. That is its definition is clearly diagrammed in this picture. The range of space for the finding the range we are considering the domain set. Okay. So, range T is equal to set of all T of V. We are taking the elements in the core domain we are considering for null space we are considering the domain V. So, in the domain set left side set indicates the domain in this we are finding the collection kernel T in the core domain. W we are finding the collection T of V. E. So, here it is clear that V and the kernel T and range T, T of V e are subspace of the domain as well as codomain. The same concept is explained in this diagram also. So, in the left side diagram it is a domain space V in this the shaded in this picture indicates the kernel T that which all the points that are ima images, its images are 0 it is indicated in here and then the range space is indicated in the codomain the vector space W. Yes. Now, let us see some examples. So, here we I consider an example T from V to V. Here V is a vector space, it is mapped into the same vector space V it is defined as T of x equal to x for all x belongs to V. So, we know that this is the identity transformation. So, this is identity operator is denoted as I. For this we can estimate uh, nullity and rank T. For nullity T what we have to find? We have to kind the find the kernel T collection. So, kernel here all the identity map indicates that all the element is are mapped into the same elements. That is why here the only one element 0 is mapped to 0, all the non-zero elements are mapped to uh, some other elements. That is why kernel we have only one element singleton 0. Its range, its uh, basis is empty set, is not it? No element uh, in this sub collection singleton 0 is a linearly independent set. That is why its dimension, what is dimension? Dimension is nothing but the number of elements and the number of elements in the basis of this kernel i. Here there is no basis element is there that is why nullity of i is 0. 
for range set we are considering the image set here all the elements are mapped to the same elements that is why image set is nothing but range of E i is nothing but the whole set V that is why its dimension is rank of i is nothing but dimension of e. So, here if the dimension of e is some n elements here rank and dimension are n and nullity is 0 hope you could understand. Next an important theorem that is rank nullity theorem the statement is if t is a transformation from two vector spaces v and f over the field f ok. If some dimension of V equal to n, the sum of rank T plus nullity T will be equal to dimension of V. So, rank T plus nullity T is dimension of V. Now, let us see its proof. So, let here it is given that the dimension of V is n, that is why we are considering it has a basis with n elements. We take B as its basis set, it consists of the elements v1, v2, v3, etc., vp, vp plus 1, etc., vn. It is given that null space is a subspace of v. So, definitely subspace of a finite space must be finite. Hence, why the dimension of the null space must be finite. Let us take the dimension of null space n of t as p. Here we are considering. So, nullity of t, its dimension value is indicate p. That is why the null space must have a basis of dimension p. Here we are considering B1 as a basis for the null space it consisting elements B1, B2, etc., Vp. That is why what is null space we already uh, defined that all its elements are mapped to 0. That means the image under the map linear map T will be equal to 0. That is T of V1 equal to T of V2, etc., equal to T of Vp everything mapped to 0. Now we consider the basis B2. B2 is an element of what is B2 here we are considering B2 is a basis of range set R of T. So, in the range set all the elements are image elements. So, here we are considering B2 as the set of elements of T of Vp plus 1 comma T of Vp plus 2 etc. T of Vn. Our aim is to prove that this B2 is a basis for this range space. So, if we prove that we can come to the conclusion of the theorem. So, what is basis uh, sub, uh, sub collection is a basis if it must satisfy two condition one is linearly independent another one is span of t. So, first let us uh, prove one by one first we prove this B2 collection is linearly independent. So, how do we prove linearly independent for that the linear combination of all the elements in B2 collection must be equal to 0 implies all its scalar coefficients must be equal to 0. See what is our claim now? We have to prove that alpha p plus 1 equal to alpha p plus 2 etc equal to alpha n must be equal to 0 that is our claim. So, for that here we are considering sigma alpha i t of v i equal to 0 that implies sigma of t of alpha i v i equal to 0 because t is linear map that is why we can do like this. That implies T of sigma alpha I V A equal to 0. This is also because of T is linear. Up here that T transformation of something is 0 implies that collection must be a member of null space. That is why sigma alpha I V A belongs to N of T. But that is uh, we already know that B1 is a basis of N of T. That is why this collection can be null space collection can be expressed as a linear combination of elements of V1, V2, etc., Vp. That is why sigma alpha i V i equal to sigma beta i V i, ok. That implies the right hand side summation minus left hand side summation equal to 0. That is beta 1 V1 plus etc., beta p V p minus alpha p plus 1 V p plus 1 minus etc., minus alpha n V n equal to 0. See we know that B is a basis of V because it is given the dimension of V is n. That is why this uh, all the scalar coefficient in this linear combination must be equal to 0. So, all the well scalars B1, B2, P, P, alpha P plus 1 etc., alpha n all are equal to 0. Hence, we got the uh, required result alpha P plus 1 etc., alpha n equal to 0. So, we conclude that beta is linearly independent. Next let us prove. Uh, beta is a 
beta spans the range space R of t. So, what is the span every element in that collection if you take y belongs to R of t that must be expressed as a linear combination of elements of B2 then we can say it is a span it spans the set R of t. So, for that purpose we are considering an element y belongs to R of t. So, R of t is a set of all t of v such that b belongs to b. This that means there exists an element x in b such that y equal to t of x. Here x is a member of v we know that b is the basis of v that is why x can be expressed as the linear combination of v1, v2 etc, vn that is why x is equal to sigma alpha i vi that implies t of x is equal to t of sigma alpha i vi. By using linearity property we can write this is sigma alpha i t of a that summation i equal to 1 to n can be splitted as i equal to 1 to p and p plus 1 to n. Now, t of x is sigma i equal to p plus 1 to n alpha i t of v i because t of v i are all 0 because in the null space i equal to p plus i equal to 1 to p alpha i t of v i values will be 0 that is why we are getting this collection. Therefore, the t of x is nothing but y is a linear combination of all the elements of b2. Hence, we conclude that b2 spans r of t. So, now we proved that B2 is a basis for R of T that is why dimension of B2 will be equal to n minus P because it starts from VP plus 1 and end with n dimension of the vector space is n that is why these values are n minus P. But dimension of R of T range space B2 dimension of B2 is nothing but dimension of R of T that is equal to n minus what is P? P is a dimension of kernel T that is why rank t equal to n minus nullity t hence we obtain the result dimension of v equal to rank t plus nullity t. Uh, another result in this a linear transformation is called non singular if t is 1 1 otherwise t is called singular. So, we can classify the linear transformation is singular or non singular just by checking t is 1 1 or not. If it is a 1 1 map we can conclude that it is a non singular it has a solution otherwise it is singular. So, from that we can obtain the following results the, fol the following 6 statements are true if t is a linear transformation from v to w. The first one is rank t is always less than or equal to dimension by the previous theorem dimension of v plus rank uh, t and uh, rank t plus nullity t equal to dimension of v. So, rank t will and nullity t value will be less than or equal to dimension of v. that gives the first two result and third result is rank t I already told that rank uh, space range space is the subspace of the codomain w that is why rank of t will be less than or equal to dimension of w and then fourth result if t is on to the then rank t and dimension of w both will be equal because the range space will be equal to codomain. And then fifth case if t is non singular then rank t will be equal to dimension of v and finally rank t and dimension of v are equal that implies nullity value is 0 because the previous theorems told that rank t plus nullity t is dimension here rank t equal to dimension v automatically implies that nullity value is 0. And let us see some of the examples using these concepts see here in this problem uh, in the rank and the nullity rank concept is used to find the rank of the matrix here the matrix A is given with 5 columns and 3 rows. So, here we are finding the rank and nullity by reducing the given matrix by row operations. So, by reducing the row operation we obtain the matrix like this in this the principal uh, diagonal entries are 1 minus 1 1 and here we are converting the given matrix into upper triangular matrix. So, 1 minus 1 1 occur in the leading diagonal that is why its rank will be 3. So, if we know the rank of 3 and uh, the uh, dimension of the given matrix is uh, 5 is not it that is why we can easily find the nullity t by making use of the previous theorem dimension of v minus rank of the transformation that is 5 minus 3 that is equal to 2 hope you could understand this. 
Next, one more example, finding rank and nullity of the matrix. For here, 3 by 3 matrix is given that. So, here we are converting the given matrix by row reduction as on the matrix 1 minus 3 minus 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, upper triangular matrix. Here, the leading entries are non zero entries 1, 1, minus 1. That is why its rank indicates that 3 and the dimension is 3. That is nullity. What is its nullity will be value? Uh, what 3 minus 3 that is equal to 0. So, here the nullity of the given matrix is 3. So, here the nullity is singleton 0, its dimension uh, is 0. Why it is dimension is 0? Usually we say number of elements, but dimension of the vector space indicates the number of elements in the basis collection. The singleton 0 has no basis, okay, empty set, its basis is nothing but empty sets, that is why its dimension is 0. So, now this concept rank and nullity is applicable not only in finding the uh, by solving the matrices for finding rank and nullity, it also applied in polynomial interpolation and solving system of linear equations. In the ordinary differential equation, it is used to solve the uh, finding undetermined coefficient and also in partial differential equation, it is used to solve the numerical solution to Laplace equation. Yes, thank you.